Good morning, Tulip friends. Okay, are you ready? Let's sing hello. Hello, cha cha cha. Hello, cha cha cha. Hello, and how are you? Cha cha cha. I'm fine, cha cha cha. I'm fine, cha cha cha. And I hope that you are too, cha cha cha. Hold on, I'm just gonna adjust the camera real quick. Okay, so let's do our calendar. We are actually in the last day of our month, which is crazy. Can't believe it went so quick. Okay, so who could tell me the name of our month? It begins with the letter A. It's April. Can we say April? April. Good. We're in the month of April. We're in the month of April. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. We're in the month of April. We're in the month of April. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Very good. We're going to have to do a lot of counting because we are in the last day of this month. So can you guys count? Help me count how many days we have so far in April. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. What number comes after 29, friends? It is 30. Today is April 30th. It's the last day of April. Okay, let's figure out what year it is. That has not changed. What year are we in, guys? We are in 2020. Can we say that together? 2020. So today is April 30th, 2020. What season are we in? We are still in spring. Um, we can tell again from the weather today. It's been raining nonstop here. It rained all night. Should be good for the plants though, right? We know plants need rain and they are certainly getting tons of water. So our plants should be super healthy. So Let's figure out what day of the week it is. So yesterday was Wednesday, right? We had our small groups yesterday. Let's figure out what today is. We have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. What? What day comes after Wednesday? Today is Thursday. Could we say Thursday? Thursday. Today is Thursday. Now let's figure out what tomorrow will be. We have Sunday, Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What? What day comes after Thursday? It's Friday. Can we say Friday? Friday. Tomorrow will be Friday. Now, as we said, we're going to get a brand new month tomorrow. Today is the last day of April. So let's think. Let's see if we can figure out what month is going to come next. That we will start tomorrow. So let's think of our song. We have January, February, March, April. May. Next month will be May, or tomorrow will be May. We will start May. Okay, so that is going to be our new month starting tomorrow. Okay, so let's go over the stuff we've been learning. Because, like I said, we're starting a new month, so we're going to be starting all new stuff next week. Um, So let's make sure we know this stuff first. Okay, so the first letter we've learned this month was this letter. What letter is this, friends? This is the letter E. Could we say E? E. And what sound does E make? E says eh, eh, right? Can we say that together? Eh, eh. Like eh, eh, egg. Oh, this is Charles wrong. <laughs> eh, eh, egg. Good. The next one we learned was this letter. What letter was this? This is the letter N. Can we say N? N. And what sound does N make? 
says no, no. Right, remember her tongue's the back of teeth. Mm, no, like no, no, nose, no, no, nose. And the last one we learned was last week's letter, which is this guy. What letter is this? This is the letter X. Can we say X, X? And what sound does X make? X says X, right? It's that strange sounding one. Can we say X, X, like X, right? And at the end of our word here in Fox, so we have X, Ray, Fox. Awesome. So one more time, can we say X, X says X, X, like X, Ray, and Fox. Very good. Okay, so let's do our sight word. Our sight word was S, A, I, C. Does anyone remember what S-A-I-D spells? It is said. Can we say said? Said. Like, I said good morning, friends. <laughs> Can you guys come up with a sentence for said? Very good. Can we say said? Said. So let's do our word family. Remember, we are learning the E, T word family. And H, he says E. It's not a word. It's an ending sound, though, we can use to make new words. So let's not throw the marker on the floor. That does not help. Um, so the first one we learned was, what letter is this? It's the letter P, right? Can we say P? And what sound does P make? P says P, P, right? And then we're going to add at. So we have P, at, P, at, P, at. What word is this? This is pet. Can we say pet? Like a pet guinea pig. There's Dusty behind me. I don't know if you can see him. <laughs> Next one we had was the letter W. Well, what sound does... Oh, I just told you what letter it is. Oh, my goodness. Well, hopefully you knew that. <laughs> um, what sound does W make, though? W says wah, wah. Can we say that together? Ready? Wah, wah. And now we're going to add et to that. So we have wah, at, wah, at, wah, at. What word is that? It is wet, right? Like you get wet in the rain, which it's been doing a ton of the last couple of days. Wet. Okay, now the other one we have learned, and then we'll do the one we learned yesterday, was the letter N. Oh my gosh, this is the second time I've said the letter no. Sorry, friends. Well, it, we went over it before. What sound does N make? It says na, na. Now we're going to add at. So we have na, at, na, at, na. What word is that? We have net, right? Like you can catch a butterfly in a net. And the last one was the one we did yesterday. Was this letter? What letter is this? It's G, right? And what sound does G make? G says G, G. And now we're going to add at. So we have G, at, G, at, G, at. What word is that? It is get. Could we say get? Get. Like, can you get me that book over there? Get. So can you guys repeat after me? Remember, all of our words are going to rhyme because words that rhyme are words that have the same ending sound. Obviously, all our words end in E-T. So can you guys repeat after me? We have et, et, pet, pet, wet, wet, net, net, get, get. Very good. Let's do our numbers of the month our first number is a one and a five what number is a one and a five guys that is 15 could we say 15 15 and then our second one is this one a one and a six what number is this this is 16 can we say 16 16 it's already 15, 15, 16, 16. Awesome. Okay, so let's go over our color and shape of the month because, again, we're getting all new stuff next week. Which is, I decided to fling all the way on the other side of the couch. Sorry. Okay, so <laughs> what is the name of this shape? What shape is this? 
This is an oval. Can we say oval? Oval. And what kind of sides does our oval have? It's curved sides. Can we say curved sides? Good. Now our next color is this guy, which is what color? He's yellow. Can we say yellow? Yellow. Very good. This is the color yellow. So we are going to check on our lima bean plants today. So let me just pause this and I will go grab them. Okay, so I grabbed our lima bean plant in the bag. And we're going to check to see if it looks any different from yesterday. We'll see if there's been any changes. The positive thing is, since I changed the paper towel out and the bag and threw out the rotten lima beans, it actually doesn't really smell anymore. So, fingers crossed, it will keep growing um, because it seems to be doing okay now. So, hopefully, as long as we keep this up, it will continue to grow. Ooh, this looks really good. Okay, so unfortunately this guy, I'll show you all of them, is still not growing. I think unfortunately I'm going to have to throw him in the garbage because he's starting to get slimy. Um, and he's not going to grow. But our other ones are growing really nicely. So again, they're growing at different times because we have to remember plants are living things. Just like people don't all grow at the same time, right? Well, plants don't either. So we'll start out with the smallest one. You can see here though, it is starting to grow, okay? We have our shoot is starting to come out of our lima bean plant, okay? And we can see it's growing quite a bit. Now, since it's still in its seed phase here, it's still using the food inside to grow. Um, you can see that here, but it's growing quite a bit. Our next one, the one kind of in the middle, now, this is growing quite a lot, okay? You could see the shoot is coming out here and starting to curl around. Um, and again, it's starting to crack open because soon it's going to stop using the food inside the seed, okay? It's going to start to make its own food soon once it gets bigger. And remember, the way plants make their own food is through photosynthesis, right? That's our fancy word. That means plants make their own food with sunlight and water. And we can really start to see that here with this guy. He's gotten huge. Look at this. Okay, our shoot is coming out quite a bit here. Okay, and again, we can see it's starting to crack open because um, it's not going to need this shell case for much longer. Um, and yeah, he's growing quite well. So we will keep checking on these, but it shows you a good idea of the different steps of the plant's life cycle, right? The steps that it grows in, just because you can see, okay, we're at totally different phases here. Especially from this guy who's going to have to go in the garbage, right? It started out like this and now it's gone all the way to here. So, talking about plants, we've been talking this week about how plants are living things, right? They all need the same things to grow, which is what? They all need sun, right? They need water, they need air, and they need soil. Now, our lima beans, we don't have soil for. We're using the paper towel like soil, right? It's to hold all the water in place, and it keeps our lima beans safe. Um, but generally, outside, we plant and soil, right? And soil also has nutrients, remember, which are like vitamins that help the plants to grow. So even though our plants look totally different, right? Remember yesterday we looked at the different seeds and like the carrot seeds were really tiny, where here our lima bean seeds are huge. Even though our plants look different and are different colors and different sizes, they all need the same things to grow, right? They all need those four things we had talked about to grow. They also all grow in the same steps, right? They start out as seeds, then they grow into our seedling and eventually it will grow up into a grown-up plant which will then make its own seeds right that will be able to plant and start the whole thing over again so that's some ways they are alike we talked about this with fruits and vegetables right that they were different parts of the plant but they still needed the same things yesterday we talked about even though seeds look different right they all need the same things to grow well today we're going to talk a little bit more about plants and how they can be different now again we know there are some things that are the same but a lot of things are different one of the things that's different is we talked about this a little bit in our groups yesterday i asked you guys why when i went on my site walk did i not see any cactuses growing in new york okay why not who can tell me why don't we see a cactus growing in new york 
Well, they only grow in the desert, right? A desert is a place where it's hot and does not get a lot of rain. Obviously, like the total opposite of us because we are getting a ton of rain. So a cactus has to figure out how to grow in the desert, okay? And there's a special way it does that because we get lots of rain, right? Our plants get lots of rain and they use that water to make their own food. So a cactus still needs water, but what does it do then when it can't get a lot of water from the rain in the desert? So what it does is inside it has a very large stem, okay? And they can actually hold water in that stem. So when it does rain, it collects the water and holds it in there. And it has like a waxy, which is kind of like a candle feel on the outside of its stem. And it helps it to hold the water in. So even when it doesn't rain, it can hold the water for, la for later, okay? And then use that water when it's not getting it from the rain. So we also can find plants in other places that are different from here. So if we think about things like seaweed, okay, where does seaweed grow? Am I going to find that on the ground outside? No, right? Seaweed, as the name suggests, it grows in the sea or the water, right? So that needs a lot of water to grow. Or we had seen this in our other book. We had had water lilies, right? Those little pads that the frogs sit on. We saw those in our water unit. They grow on top of ponds, okay? So they need a place to grow that has lots of water. So total opposites, right? The cactus grows where there's not a lot of water and our seaweed and water lilies grow where there's tons of water. So plants can live in all different places. And we also have some plants that don't actually use um, the same amount of soil as the rest of our plants. So uh, we saw this in one of our other books, which we're actually gonna read again tomorrow. But the orchid plant, right, like our little baby friends, the orchids, actually grows on the top of trees. So how does it grow then? Do, its roots aren't able to soak up the water from the soil if it's on top of a tree. So how does it still grow? Well, it collects the water or grabs the water from the air, okay, around it because they grow in the rainforest. And the rainforest has tons and tons and tons of rain. That's why they call it the rainforest. So it's able to collect the water from the air and grab it in order to grow. Now, there's also one other type of plant that is totally different. It's All these plants still need the same things to grow, but this type of plant lives in a place where there is not a lot of nutrients or vitamins in the soil. So even though it makes some of its food using water and sunlight, it doesn't quite make enough. So guess what it does? It is called the Venus flytrap, and another plant that does this is the pitcher plant. So what does it do? Well, it actually eats bugs, which is crazy, right? A plant that eats bugs, but they do exist. So they don't get enough nutrients or vitamins from the soil, and when they make their own food, they still don't get enough to be healthy. So what they do is they actually trap bugs and eat them. So yeah, there are some types of plants that actually eat bugs. So all these plants can grow in different places, okay? Even though some of these places might not have what they need 100%, right? Like the desert doesn't have a lot of water. So all these different things that the plants do to help them survive or stay alive, we call adaptation. Can we say that word? Adaptation. And adaptation is just a fancy word for changes that plants make to help them live in a place that maybe doesn't have everything they need, right? Like the Venus flytrap adapts or changes by eating bugs because it doesn't get enough vitamins from the soil or the cactus doesn't get enough water from the rain. So it adapts or changes to hold the water in its stem. So that's how plants are able to grow in totally different environments or places, okay, that have totally different types of weather. And it still gives them all the same things that they need. So we're actually going to read a book right now about cactuses. And we can actually see here on the front that our cactus has a pretty wide stem. And remember we said that stem is waxy like a candle. And it allows it to hold the water in even though the environment it lives in is very dry. So the title of this book is called Nobody Hugs a Cactus. So you guys tell me, why do you think it's a really bad idea to hug a cactus? Well, they have spikes on them, right? That's another adaptation or change that they make. The reason they have these spines on them is, think about it, if an animal goes to eat the cactus, what is going to happen? Well, it's certainly not going to want to eat it because those spines are going to go into the mouth and poke them. Okay, so they're not going to want to eat it. So we certainly wouldn't want to give it a hug either. So let's read this book. Find out about this cactus. Now we can look on the front cover here. We see this book takes place in the desert, right? 
because we know cactuses grow in the desert where there's not a lot of water. Okay, here's our cactus. The types of plants we have, like our pine trees, would certainly not be able to grow here because they need lots of water, but our cactus adapts or changes the way it is so that way it can grow where there's not a lot of water. This is Hank. <laughs> Hank lived in a pot. The pot sat in a window. The window looked over the empty desert. It was hot, dry, peaceful, and quiet, just the way Hank liked it. But every now and then, somebody would interrupt Hank's peace and quiet. Hi, Hank, Rosie the tumbleweed called out. Isn't it a beautiful day? Hank ignored her. He just wanted to be left alone. That's not very nice, right? Okay, so long, said Rosie cheerfully, and she tumbled away. Hank was happy again. Is it nice to just, like, ignore people like that, friends? No, Hank is not being a good friend at all to Rosie. But just as he was beginning to relax, hello, shouted a tortoise. This is private property, said Hank. Keep out. The tortoise was so frightened, he just hid in his shell. Friends, is, is Hank being nice? No, he's being super rude. Do you think he's going to have any friends with the way he's acting? No, right? No one wants to be friends with somebody who's rude like that. Hank was still yelling at the tortoise when a jackrabbit dashed by. Hiya, Prickles, he shouted. My name isn't Prickles, said Hank, and you stay out of my yard. Tumbleweeds, tortoises, jackrabbits, what's next, said Hank. A coyote came loping by. No dogs allowed, Hank yelled. Not dogs, said the coyote, and you are as prickly on the inside as you are on the outside. So what does that even mean? Well, prickly is another word for being like rude and mean and not very nice, right? And Hank is covered in prickles, like little spikes, and he's being just as rude. Before Hank could yell back at the coyote, a cowboy strode past. Keep off the grass, shouted Hank. What grass, said the cowboy? It seems to me somebody needs a hug. Too bad nobody can hug a cactus. Hi, said the lizard. Who invited you, said Hank. And just in case you're wondering, I don't want a hug. That's good, said the lizard, because I don't want to give you one. Then he skittered away. So how do you guys think Hank is going to feel? He's chasing all these friends away. Do you think anybody's going to want to hang out with him? How do you think he's going to start to feel with no friends and nobody to talk to? Probably going to start to feel pretty lonely, right? An owl landed on the roof. If you're looking for a hug, said Hank, well, I guess I could give you one. Hmm. He's starting to get pretty lonely without some friends, right? me said the owl you must be joking and for the first time hank began to feel just a little bit lonely mm, look at his face he's very sad remember lonely means you have nobody to talk to and play with and you know makes you feel sad the next morning hank was feeling more sad on the inside than prickly maybe a hug wouldn't be so bad after all The wind began to pick up. An old cup blew by and pfft, got stuck to Hank's face. His arms were too short to get it off. Just great, said Hank. So what do you think Hank could do? He can't reach the cup with his arms. What do you think he could do to get the cup off? Hmm, let's see. After a while, Rosie came bouncing by. I'll get it off of you, Hank, she shouted and jumped up to knock the cup right off Hank's face. Then she tumbled away. So, hmm, it looks like his friends actually helped him.
Hank didn't even have time to thank Rosie. He felt so bad about all the other times he'd been rude to her. So he came up with a plan. Right, because good friends help each other. And that's why we do need friends. So now Hank feels pretty bad about the way he's been acting to her. He's been super mean. Hank decided to grow the best flower he could and give it to Rosie as a thank you gift. It took days, but at last it was ready. He couldn't wait for Rosie to pass by again. When she finally did come bouncing back, Hank held out the flower. Look, Rosie, he said, I grew this just for you. Rosie was so surprised, she jumped up and gave Hank a great big hug. It felt so nice that Hank didn't want to let go. And as things turned out, he couldn't because Rosie and Hank became stuck together. So how does it look like Hank feels now? Does he still look lonely and sad? No, right, we can see he's smiling because he finally has a friend. Fortunately, he's stuck to her, but he finally has a friend. But they didn't care. After all, it's better to be stuck in a hug than stuck all alone. The end. Look, we can see both Hank and Rosie are smiling because now they have a friend. So I hope you guys enjoyed this book and we will continue learning more about plants tomorrow. So before we go, I want to play a quick adding game. It snapshots the one we played yesterday in our small groups. And I had sent you guys these cards home yesterday in an email. Um, but you can actually make your own if you don't have a printer. Um, you can easily make these. You just need some paper and a marker. And you just have to make dots from 1 to 10, okay? It's easy enough that you guys can make this at home, even if you can't print the cards. You can make your own. So what I'm going to do is, for those of you who didn't get to play with me yesterday, I'm going to hold up two cards. I'm only going to hold them up for a few seconds, okay? So you're going to have to look carefully. And you're going to count or add how many dots you see in both groups. Okay, ready? So how many dots do you see here? I'm going to show you one more time. How many dots is this? How many did you see? Well, let's count them, okay? We have one, two, three, four, five on this card, and one on this card. So how many is this all together? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six dots. Let's do another one. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Ready? How many dots do you see here? Let me show you one more time. Make sure you're looking. How many dots did you guys see all together? Well, we have one, two, three dots on this card and one, two, three, four dots on this card. So how many is that all together? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots. Okay, we'll do one more. Okay, ready? You're watching? I'm going to show you quick. Make sure you're looking. Okay, I'm going to show you quick one more time. So how many dots did you guys see? Well, we had one, two, three dots on this card. And one, two, three, four, five dots on this card. So how many is that all together? Well, we're going to count. We have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dots all together. So you guys can play this game at home um, and you can change the different cards to make different numbers. Okay, and if it's too hard for you to remember what you saw, you can always just flip the cards back over again yourself and count them the way we just did. So I hope you guys have fun playing this game. 
and tomorrow we will check back in on our line moving plants and learn some more about how plants adapt or change to fit the place that they live. So I'm also going to include some videos um, today and tomorrow that will teach you more about different types of plants like the Venus flytrap that eats bugs and plants that live in different places. So I hope you guys enjoy that and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!